Hello and welcome to Yourpedia. My name is Aman Sharma and I am your mentor for CSC at Yourpedia. So today we'll be doing some uh, questions asked in a technical assistant exam. So the topic that we have chose, uh, ch chosen is uh, data structures and algorithm. So we'll be solving some mixed questions from data structures and algorithm. So uh, we have also posted some previous videos regarding scientist B also. So you'll be able to make the comparison with, uh, what, whether what is the difficulty level between uh, this NIC uh, technical assistant A, A exam and scientist B exam. So the first question is, it's uh, about the time complexity. It is saying that int function int n, so you have made a function. In this function, I, s initial value of s is 0 and there is a loop while n is greater than or equal to uh, 1. So this will go. So uh, this will run till n is greater than or equal to 1. So there is no n value given. So you will be uh, giving the n value. So we have to uh, tell what will be the time complexity. What is the time taken for this loop? So while after while there is a condition that every time n is divided by 2 and s is incremented. So it is asking what is the value of s. Now value of s will always be equal to the uh, number of times that this loop will run because if this loop uh, loop runs 100 times s will be incremented 100 times and we have to see how many iterations we have to do in order to get from n to the value 1 so let's say that we have initially n here so after first iteration after uh, going through the loop the value will be n by 2 you can write it as n by 2 raised to power 1 after second iteration, the value will be n by 2 raised 2 into 2, which is equal to 2 raised to power 2. After the next iteration, it will be 2 raised to power 3 and let's say it goes on till 2 raised to power k. Now, the, uh, the loop, uh, the system will come out of the loop only when n is greater than or equal to 1. This condition fails. So, this will be true when n is equal to 1. So, when n is greater, uh, n is equal to 2, it is still greater than 1, so that condition will not fail. But when uh, when you reach 2 and you divide by 2, you will get n equal to 1. At that point, n1 is not greater than 1. So that will uh, that thing will fail and it will come out of the loop. So that is the checking condition. So when the value of n, n by 2 raised to power k reaches 1, our system will come out of the loop and th this will be the number of times that the loop has run. Because you can clearly see that the number of iterations here are k for, uh, first it, uh, for the after first iteration it was 2 raised to power 1 after second 2 raised to power 2 after third 2 raised to power 3 and after k iterations it will be n by 2 raised to power k now if you can find out the value of k when n by 2k is equal to 1 you can find out the number of iterations or the number of times the loop has run so if you can do this n is equal to 2 raised to power k now we can take log both sides so this will be log n, this will be log, so base 2, log 2 base 2k, log, uh, now k will come out to the front, remaining is log 2 base 2. Now log 2 base 2 is nothing but 1. So the value of k is equal to log 2n. So the time complexity of the this function will be order of log n because it is running log n times. So the correct answer will be option b. So you can see that the questions that we did in scientist b exam was uh, 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 if they were uh, regarding time complexity they were little tough you have nested loops there but here you have a simple loop n uh, n is uh, decrementing uh, like you are dividing the n value of n to after uh, every iteration so n n by 2 n by 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power 3 up to 2k you will equate it with the 1 and when you equate it, it with the 1 you will get the value of k which is the time complexity of our function so it is pretty easy as compared to the scientist B exam. So you can see that in a technical assistant there will be theoretical questions and the questions that will be numerical will be of lesser difficulty. So let's move on to the next question. Now the next is number of comparison needed to sort the array this by using bubble sort. So instead of counting the comparison you should understand the concept of bubble sort. So what bubble sort do is let's say that this is the array. 7, 9, 31, 19, 5 and 13. First it will compare this with this. Now in this it will see that 22 is greater. So next, so let's say that pointer is here. So it when it sees that 22 is greater, pointer will be moved towards the 
this part. Now, when 22 and 7 are compared, you can see that 22 is greater. So, 22 will be interchanged with 7 and pointer will be shifted here. So, we will not be uh, point, uh, allocating the pointer now. So, after 22 is compared with n, uh, sorry 9, it will again be shifted. Again 22 compared with 31. So, now 31 is greater. So, 31 will be compared again. So, after 31, 19 is smaller than 31. So, 31 will be interchanged. Again for 5, similar case. 5 will come here, 31 will come here and 13 will come here and 31 will come here. And for the next iteration, only this part of the array will be compared. So, you can see that one element which is the maximum element will come out of the array and will be placed at the last place. So, after one iteration, you get one, uh, you, uh, after one iteration, you get one element which is maximum. Now, again, this procedure will be done for this array and then again you will find the uh, maximum element now you can see here no matter how what which is the maximum element no matter where the maximum element is present first you compared these two then you compared these two then you compared these two then these then these then these and then last these so how many comparison one two three four five six seven comparison so for eight elements there were seven comparisons next time you will be comparing seven elements so there will be six, uh, six comparison there for six. Uh, now after that you will be comparing six elements for six elements there will be five comparisons and so on. At last you will be comparing just two elements. So the number of comparison will be one. So this is the total number of comparison required for this uh, this question. So this will be uh, sum of natural number where n is equal to seven. So seven into n into n plus one by two, which is equal to twenty eight. Now the uh, option twenty is not uh, not mentioned. The question was dropped from the uh, after uh, the checking was done so this was this question was not correct now if you normally want to get a uh, normal formula let's say that this is n element array so for n element array total number of comparison for first pass will be n minus 1 plus n minus 2 up to so on up to 1 and if you apply the formula n minus 1 sum of natural number into n minus 1 plus 1 is n divided by 2 which is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 and if you take it asymptotically it will be order of n square comparison so the exact is n into n minus 1 by 2 so you can directly uh, if you know, know the concept you can directly solve this by using that if there are 8 elements the total number of comparison will be n into n minus 1 by 2 which is 8 into 7 by 2 which is equal to 28 so you don't need to do all this so i have done all this just so that you could underst understand the concept but in exam you will just apply the formula if you have uh, if you have uh, cleared your concepts so the next question is <coughs> the main measure for efficiency of algorithm is now this is a theoretical question but if you see when we study the when we study the subject algorithm what we study normally what we study is we study different algorithms and we study what is the time taken by that algorithm so this we study time complexity and what we study space complexity what is the space taken by the algorithm so these are the two things that we study so this this is the answer of this question the main measure of efficiency of algorithm that whether algorithm is better or not or if you have two algorithms which algorithm is better out of the two so the algorithm which will be having uh, the less time complexity and if both are having same time complexity you will choose the one with the less space complexity so time and memory space are the one which we use to measure the efficiency of the algorithm so in this you can see it was a theoretical question but you don't need a in-depth knowledge of uh, the topic because the things that they are asking in this exam the difficulty is uh, so less for technical assistant a that if even if you have studied basic things you will be able to answer the question so let's move on to the next question now next is again to split a linked list into smaller and smaller possible sub problems so you are splitting the linked list into smaller sub problems and then solving individual sub problems to get final answer and then joining the individual results so what we do in divide and conquer first we divide 
then after dividing it into smaller problems we conquer the smaller problems and when we have conquered the smaller problems we go on combining the answer so this is what divide and conquer is divide and conquer i can also give you an example for this let's say that you have an array that you have to sort and let's say that the array is 5 6 4 1 2 3 11 and 8 now when you want to apply divide and conquer first you what you will do is you will divide this array into two parts first is 5 6 4 1 2 3 1 1 8 now next step what we will do is we will divide this array into two further parts 5 6 4 1 2 3 11 8 now we have divided the bigger problem into sub problem so we have done the dividing now uh, you can see at each level what you are doing is you are normally you have the length of the array you are dividing uh, you are just going let's say the length of array is n you are just going n by 2 you are calculating the calculating the position where the midpoint of the array is and you are just dividing it so you are just applying a formula which is n by 2 so the time complexity at each level in order to divide the element is order of 1 so after that when you have divided all these things now the time is for combine now uh, sorry conquer now if this element this whole array takes t of n time let's say the time complexity for this is t of n time so you have divided it into two parts with uh, with half of the size so these will take this will take t of n by 2 time and this will take t of n by 2 time so this is based on the levels if this takes t to tn by 2 this will take tn by 4 and tn by 4 this also tn by 4 tn by 4 now as far as combining is uh, combining goes first you will sort these this will be uh, this is already sorted when you sort these you will get 1 comma 4 when you sort these this is already sorted 2 comma 3 and 11 comma 8 comma 11 now when you go to the upper level when you combine these so you will compare these two with these two and when you compare when 5 is compared with 1 1 is written first because it is the smallest element now this pointer will go here and 5 is compared with 4 again 4 will come here and then 5 and 6 will come here now there will be some number of comparisons involved here that can vary depending on the type of array whether the array is sorted whether one array is sorted whether both arrays are sorted or whether the it is sorted in ascending order or descending order so number of comparisons will always vary so 2 comma 3 when compared with 8 and 11 2 will come first so pointer will move for this side also this side because this element has not been shifted so when 3 and 8 is compared 3 then 8 then 11 so you have gone to the upper level and you have sorted this problem also this problem and this problem has been sorted now you can see when you go upwards no matter how many comparisons you do but the moves that these four elements are moved to the upper state will be four because there are four elements here and the move towards the from this will be four so total how many moves are there at this level eight moves when you go from this level to this level again 4 for this 4 for this now there were 2 plus 2 4 2 plus 2 uh, i will write it down with the 10 uh, red pen so 2 plus 2 will be 4 moves here 2 plus 2 4 moves here total 8 moves now when you combine these two you will get 4 moves from this side 4 moves from this side so you will get how many moves 8 moves and total element in the array is 8 moves so total moves at any level so moves will be the combining time complexity so how many moves you have to make n moves you have to make every time you have to shift all the n elements to the upper level in the order that we have found by uh, dividing the problem and then conquering the problem so total number of moves will always be equal to the total number of elements in the array so if total number of elements in the array is n the total number of moves will be n so you could see that each level initially the problem was t of uh, n so at each level we did order of 1 in order to divide then we two uh, then we did 2 t of n by 2 plus t of n by 2 in for conquer and then we combined them with order of n at each level order of n was the combining time so if you write down this it is 
t of n is equal to this is nothing because order of n is bigger so this is 2 t n by 2 plus order of n and if you find the answer using the uh, using the master's theorem so we will compare this with this so when you compare this you compare n log b base a this is b this is a b base a <coughs> so 2 base 2 is compared with n so this is nothing but n raised to power 1 n raised to equal to n so both are equal so when both are equal we will be taking log n 0 here because there was no log n here so we will take the value uh, take the power 0 so the time complexity of this will be n and we will increase the power by 1 so log n raised to power 1 which is equal to n log n so this is the time complexity use found using divide and conquer for this method and this method is nothing but merge sort so this is how you calculate the time complexity for merge sort you divide it then you conquer it then you combine it so if you are dividing the sub problems into uh, so a bigger problem into sub problems and then solving the individual sub problem to get the final answer after joining individual results then that is called divide and conquer approach so i hope you uh, like the video and i hope you understood the concept and i hope you understood what will be the difficulty level for the exam now in this question we did a lot because i wanted to show you how divide and conquer works but the when you solve this question in the exam it is straightforward answer it is divide and conquer so it why it is straightforward because we know that how divide and conquer works so the questions are not questions are not difficult they are, the questions will be easy but you still need to have a proper understanding of all the concepts and you need to go through the whole syllabus because the question will be not difficult so even if you have gone through the syllabus at least once then also it will be more than sufficient to answer these types of questions so uh, you can check uh, check out our website uh, yourpedia where we have started a module in for nic exam so in that we will be covering the syllabus and the uh, and uh, all the technical part of the syllabus also the electronics part of the syllabus and we will be covering all the theoretical and numerical part of the syllabus so that you would be able to easily answer the questions asked both in both scientist b and technical assistant a exam so i hope you like the video so keep watching and keep preparing thank you